uh, maybe a minute or so late here, but we're we're anxious. We were finishing up our Christmas shopping. Um, <laughs> Finish? I just got started. <laughs> this is the CAD One Autodesk Recap uh, webinar. We're we're really pleased to bring this to you, and thank you, Tony, for putting it together. You bet. My, thank you, Stan. My name's Stan Henning, Business Development Manager here at CAD One, but more importantly, we have Tony Crawford, one of our ME and one of our uh, Revit and uh, Navisworks uh, technical specialists. Tony's kind of taken recap under his wing. Recap and, and point cloud technology is very exciting, and I think we're just scratching the surface on what can be done with it and how to do it and how to use it effectively and so forth. So we're going to try and get a little bit into that today and, and give you a few ideas on how you can how you can put this technology to work for you. The, the fundamentals of RECAP, in other words, uh, the basics of RECAP are built into most every suite that people own. So uh, building design suites, infrastructure design suites, all have RECAP, and yet most people don't really know what it is and what to do with it. It's, uh, RECAP stands for Reality Capture. Yep. So I'm probably stealing all your slides here, Tony. But I didn't want to get too far ahead. I'm going to do the uh, just make sure from the audio. Let's do that. And Come on, if I can get the technology to work. There we go. Thank you. Click the right buttons. So basically, if you can hear us, uh, you can raise hit your the hand. raise your hand button. And if you've not been on these webinars before, you can uh, minimize the console with the little orange or red button. It may have already are automatically minimized, in which case you can maximize it with that button. Um, you pro we recommend if uh, setting it to mic and speakers. If you can hear us, great, everything's good. If you can't hear us, <laughs> uh, there's instructions on the screen, searching it to telephone and then dial in with the number that was in the email with the registration. But if you can't hear us, that doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so are the hands coming up, Stan? Yeah, uh, okay. good, good many hands went up there. Um, probably the most important thing is if you do have questions, we try to answer them in context. Sometimes they get a little bit overwhelming, but we try and answer them in context. So type them into the question box, and we'll get with them as, as quickly as we can. Okay. Um, the basics of what I'm going to go through is the what and the where and the when and the how of recap. Um, and there's, there's a couple different flavors of it. Well, there's two, two basic flavors is what I'm going to call them. There's Recap, which includes Recap Pro. Uh, as a standalone, it's desktop software. It installs on your computer, on your laptop. It runs on you know, Windows. Uh, and it processes laser point plots. And it's included, like Stan said, with most of the suites. Um, it's, it's in there. It's on there. You can use most of the tools. As far as I know, no additional cost. There are a couple of tools. So it says Recap, and then parentheses I have Recap Pro. Um, it's the same installation, same program, but the pro features, is just like uh, just a couple of those, two or three, uh, that you have to unlock and unlock with an additional, uh, additional price, at least last time I checked. And this is software that's evolving and changing, so by the time, like if you're listening to this through uh, the recording, things may have changed uh, um, by the time you're listening to this. So Recap and Recap Pro. Uh, are the desktop software, and that does, it's pretty powerful stuff, uh, and it does a lot of laser, uh, works with laser scans, or any, well maybe not any, but a ton of different file formats and 3D meshes, that's where I'm going to spend most of my time on this, but also, Recap 360, uh, it's cloud-based, it's on the web, there's nothing to install, it's cloud-based photogrammetry service uh, that can create 3D mesh, 3D point clouds from photographs. So it is, it's really cool. Um, what this, uh, okay, so I'm going to come back to that one in just a few minutes. Um, first, I'm going to focus on the, the standalone, the desktop, the one that's included with the suites. Uh, it, most of the features you can access right as soon as you install it. Uh, nothing else to do. Uh, but there is an additional cost that you can enable, uh, and it unlocks a few of the features. Nothing more to install. Uh, it works with 3D point cloud with laser scans or other meshes. It prepares, it's, I kind of call it middleware. Um, it's, you don't design in it, but you use it in between the laser scans to process it, to clean it up, and then input the, import the laser scans into AutoCAD or Revit or Civil 3D or any, I don't know how many other programs. Um, so it prepares the raw point cloud to be used with other software. Uh, you can open the files, you can combine files if there's multiple scans of a larger building. 
Uh, you can align them, you can register, you can export to a couple different formats, which is coming up in a couple different slides. You can navigate, you can crop, you can clean, basically you can just clean them up and prepare them uh, for use in other programs. Uh, importing, going into uh, Autodesk Recap and Recap Pro, uh, there's about 20 different file formats. So as far as I know, all the la main, uh, major laser scanning uh, manufacturers, Ferro is in there, Leica is in there, Topcon is in there, and uh, Tremble. Yeah. Can't forget Tremble, even though. I don't know, even though my, okay. <laughs> they aren't uh, Autodesk's favorite. We can't forget no, them. I don't know what file format they use. I don't know if they They're in there. Okay. <laughs> so I counted about 20 different file formats, uh, including text files, XYZ files, you know, Autodesk Point Cloud files. Um, so a ton of different formats can go into Recap. Coming out of Recap, it's more standardized. You have RCS formats which is a single point cloud file, um, and these use, sorry, these meters, uh, this is kind of the standard Autodesk, like just about any Autodesk software can take this RCS format and this RCP format, which is kind of a parent file. It includes, so I'm going to call them XRAPs or links. Uh, there's a couple other formats, PG, PCG, PTS, and E57 are some additional formats that can be exported. So I just come with some background information on what is Recap. Recap Pro, the desktop one. So we've talked about point clouds or laser scans. I'm using those relatively interchangeably. Um, but what is a point cloud or a laser scan? Well, it's everybody knows a photograph is 2D. Now let's see if I have the right stuff open. I'm going to open up. I'm going to open up Recap. Don't have that running. Just going to open up. Okay. So you've seen a. You've seen. A, surely you've seen photographs. You know what they are. You know they're two dimensional. When I open this up. Um, if it's surely you've seen that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to do other stuff at the same time. Yeah, unless there's, you know, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to follow down that rabbit hole. Um, mine is unlocked. I have the pro version. Uh, if you don't have it unlocked, if you have the the standard version, which has 90 some percent of the same tools, um, there's a little icon up here. It says unsurpassed registration, and it says click here to unlock this feature. Uh, to enable the pro features. So I'm going to close this out. So this looks like a 2D photograph, looks like the same thing. This is a, a thumbnail of the file of a laser scan. So this looks a lot like the 2D photographs, but this is a 3D scan of one of our classrooms, or two of our classrooms. So you can see the, the room, as we say the building, but you can see the room in three dimensions. You can kind of see, let's see if I can line this up. A, uh, the black spot on the floor yeah, has a little bit of a delay. Okay, there's quite a bit of a delay. Maybe I shouldn't. I'm trying to remember not to pan around so much, which is going to be hard in this one. Uh, that's where the laser scanner was sitting. Essentially, um, oh, I didn't grab a screenshot of that, but a, um, a really expensive camera that sits on a tripod. And that's where the tripod was sitting, so it couldn't scan below itself. We got everything else 360 degrees. You can see shadows, essentially, you know, where the chairs, the tables, blocks the laser. It's a laser, goes in a straight line. You know, it's, um, if you want an a, a impressive, a sh concise definition of what a laser is to impress your holiday guests this year, it's coherent light is what a laser is. The, the, you know, those, those shadow areas could have been eliminated by, uh, you know, there's a couple ways to, or there's several ways to do it. You can use uh, mirror systems, which is a little bit complex, or you can, um, most commonly set up several scans in, uh, around a, a site and then stitch them together so you don't have those uh, shadow blockages and so forth. Yeah, this was just a really quick one single scan. Uh, like Stan was saying, typically uh, for this room they might just do two scans. It's not a big room, but if you've got a large building that you would want to scan, you would do multiple ones so that you get every room, every hall, Every piece of it. And yet you can see Warren Geisler standing out in the hallway there. I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> in uh, three dimensions. I thought about standing there, but like, no, I'll probably get in trouble if I stand where the laser can see me. And so my boss does. <laughs> so Warren was standing there. Um, yeah, so you can do a number of things with this. Like, I have a distance option uh, tool at the bottom. I can measure, like, how, well, I can't see the door from right here. Let's see, how big is this picture frame on the wall? And, come on, 
Oh, two feet, yeah, eight inches. Now, realistically, Tony, when you when you do that, that picture, or the the system is looking that as just a series of dots. So basically, it's you know two feet eight inches uh, between the two points you've chosen, and not necessarily the picture frame itself. And that's something that is often confusing to people. You have to you have to uh, you know pick the right locations. Exactly. You're clicking on points on dots, uh, and there is many, many, many dots that I could choose from. Even with, you know, if I'm in the, if I'm hovering over there, you know, the computer will snap to whatever's under my mouse, but it's a little hard for me to click on the exact right, exact right one. Like if you see this door, it says two foot eleven and a fraction. So I didn't get it precisely, but um, you can get, I can get more precise, you know, just uh, talking and clicking at the same time. But considering somebody just brought in a tripod and set it in there for 60 or 120 seconds for a couple minutes, um, I could do this. Imagine if this was a much larger building, maybe a warehouse. Um, maybe we've got hundreds and thousands of square feet uh, of a building to measure. Uh, I could send the interns out and for days and days on end and spend you know, lots of time and money, and they would still miss. There's still still things would be missed, but the laser doesn't really miss much. Like maybe then nobody thought about how wide is this uh, projector screen. Well, maybe in the design this, this is something important. Or the uh, people, whoever was out there didn't measure because it's on the ceiling. Well, how far is this sprinkler head? Where is this at? So the sprinkler head is about uh, five feet from the wall. Uh, fifth, Fifteen? No, nah, that can't be right. <laughs> it's in metric. Oh, that's the y direction. It's 15 feet off of the ground. Six feet. I'm looking at the wrong numbers. Uh, six and a half feet from the wall. Um, and the laser sees everything. Uh, the scanner sees everything. So even if you forgot to measure something, this does not require a trip back out to the field just to get one dimension. Or yeah, go ahead. There's a question. Yeah, Justin uh, up in up in Bozeman has a question for us. He says, "Hey guys, just wondering what the." Uh, point limitation that recap can bring in. In other words, is there a certain? Can you overload the system with too many points? Um, pretty much, Justin. No, uh, it, it'll it will handle more points than most systems will uh, scan right now. So it's it's I would say it's for the most part unlimited. Yeah, I think it's going to run into limitations with your computer's hardware more yeah. than the software. It might just have have trouble. The computer might have trouble processing all the points. And there's there comes a point where uh, a point? No, no pun intended. Sorry. <laughs> uh, there just comes a place where, honestly, you you want to filter your uh, points because you just don't need that many. For example, if you're doing a large land scan. Maybe you do every, you know, few inches or centimeters, tenths, whatever it is, um, because you, you you don't really need to describe every little feature of a of a piece of land. Whereas, you know, if you're if you're scanning a, uh, a, a something that you're going to machine, uh, a little yeah. a widget or something that you're going to machine, and and you want high degree of accuracy for reverse engineering something, uh, you may want a much denser point cloud. So you can work with that pretty easily. It can find uh, areas. I can say, you know what, there's this, there's this, it's actually a folding curtain that's in here. Let's see if I can rotate it. Come on. There we go. Uh, maybe I'm trying to hide the wall so I can look into this, or maybe hide the ceiling. Or, oh uh, yeah, first let's, um, have the, tell the computer to recognize one, two, three, I'll use four points, find that. There, I just found everything in that plane. You can see they're kind of highlighted a certain color. I can give that, see if I can remember where I'm going. Um, well, I can delete that, or I can clip outside, or I can call it a new region. Uh, I can say this is now the uh, curtain. I think I have to spell it right. Yeah, now that that is a region, I can turn it off, I can hide it, or you know if I want to just clean this up, you know what, this was scanned while there is furniture and people in there, but we're going to be renovating this, 
I don't want to see any of the furniture. I can. Let's see if I can remember where I'm at. Let's do a window. Maybe all this furniture I just want to remove. I don't want that in my scan. I'm going to bring it into Revit or AutoCAD. Uh, I don't want any of that. I can select it all, delete it. There we go. Now this room's a whole lot cleaner. Uh, I can go through it. I can do, you know, remove other stuff. I could remove the, the pictures off the wall, but you know, then I have holes in the wall. Um, so whatever you're scanning, maybe it's an office building or a warehouse, and maybe there are some stuff in the warehouse. Maybe there's forklifts or people in the warehouse. I could, I could very quickly just delete those, clean them up. Um, I've already cropped this. Uh, I don't know if you noticed on some of them. I don't remember which one it was. Oh, I want to be state. One. There we go. It's the door was open, so the scanner went out, and just shot straight out through the the open doorway, and got the next wall down the hallway. Uh, if you have windows in the room or building that you're scanning, the laser will look out the windows, and you'll get trees and cars and parking lots. You might get stuff 100 yards away. In which case, there's extra things floating out here, kind of like this one. I cleaned this one up a little bit, uh, and later on we should we'll see some others. Uh, I can just delete these and clean them up, and then what do I do with this? Um, this there's quite a bit more I can I can do with. I can look at different colors. Do I want to? I don't want to see this elevation RGB scan location. Do I want to see? You know, it's highlighting. I can change the point display, the size of the dots. Let's see, point display, make the dots bigger, smaller. So as I'm zoomed in, I might want to see bigger dots. Uh, right now, that's a little hard to see. What is that? Uh, when I'm up really close, I can increase, increase and decrease the point display. So anyway, that's one of the options. There's a number of options in here, but I don't really do any design work. I don't use this a whole lot. Let's see what else. Oh, I can look through here. I can fly. I can orbit. I can pan. Uh, as a tool for feedback. Uh, let's see. I can measure. I can put in notes whatever deletes this. Uh, so now I have a note in there. Or remove, or wall, wall is going to change, or I can make a note, you know, this is a sprinkler pipe, this is a duct, this is a cable tray, this is a hollow pipe chase, or unused, you know, unused whatever that, you know, can be, this item remains, this item delete this, is removed, if it's a renovation, existing facilities. Uh, I can put in notes, I can put in dimensions, I can do angles, find, okay, this is an odd angle, well, everything in this room happens to be, um, happens to be 90 degrees, but if I had a wall that, you know, a room that wasn't exact, I can, I can measure angles of things. Uh, let's see what else. Well, and, and you, you know, we're doing a architecturally based one, so to speak, or facilities based one, but, you know, keep in mind that, you know, when you're doing landforms or machine parts or uh, you know, maybe it's uh, human features or, or things like that. You, yeah. You're going to need some of these these tools. So uh, don't limit it to just, I'm looking at a room here right at the moment. Yeah, it could be simple. It could be a drainage ditch. It could be a, yeah, yeah it could be an accident scene. One of the one of the most impressive things at, at AU, uh, I went to several facilities um, classes, and a gentleman who has done a, a brilliant job of facilities, I think, um, at Western Uni a Western Michigan University did a presentation, and one of the things that they do is, you know, in their machine room is go uh, in their mechanical room is go out and they actually send interns, <laughs> I love interns, they'll do anything, uh, interns out to uh, measure the equipment and, and model it up in a rudimentary fashion in Revit. And uh, I, I got to thinking about that and I thought, well, why don't you just go out and, like many people do, and just do a laser scan or two of the room. It'll locate the machinery. Uh, yeah, you'll have a point cloud, but that point cloud can sit in your model and, and operate just fine as a point cloud. You'll have that. You can attach data to it. You can, you can use it as a placeholder representation. And down the road, if you do need to flesh it out into a true Revit model or, you know, something else, you can do that. And that's one of the things that I, I think is really going to emerge a great deal. We have 
you know, another thing that came up, Tony, that I thought was very interesting, I uh, went to another uh, point cloud session on, and it was a utility company, and they were doing utility vaults and things like that, underground manholes and things like that. And one of the things that they commented on was that they had been using a GoPro camera, but they'd had to bring lights down into the uh -oh. to the area so they could light it well enough so that the GoPro could see it and then turn that into a point cloud. And I think the whole photo point cloud thing is going to go a long way. But at the same time, it struck me that's interesting because with a laser scanner, and they had these little handheld laser scanners that were really cool. Yeah. Um, they could go into that vault without any light or with just the light that was coming through uh, the, the manhole and so forth and do the scan without light and get an accurate representation. So just a ton of things that people are finding to do with this technology. Anyway, I'll let you get back to it. Okay. So I found lots of, I found, uh, I told the, told the program, told the computer, okay, find everything in this plane. And I'm going to label it the soft wall. And now that I have it, I can change the color, I can hide it, I can reveal it. Uh, come back. Anyway, so there's a little bit of delay uh, on, the, on your screen. So I can do a lot of stuff with it. I can Basically, the short version is it cleans up files. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, there's an origin at the bottom, a grid at the bottom. I can show that or not. I can see the scan locations. In this case, there are just one. There's quite a bit I can do with this but it's not a design tool. To do that, I would then take this into uh, another program, uh, such as oh, Revit but, uh, or AutoCAD. But we'll take a look at, we'll, I'm going to put that on hold for just a few minutes. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. So you've seen that a photograph is 2D. The laser scan, hopefully that's just, if you haven't seen point clouds or laser scans before, hopefully that gives you an idea of what they are. The three-dimensional thousands or millions or hundreds of millions of points. Every dot has an X and a Y and a Z coordinate. Um, and they can also have color. I think the lower, I think most of the laser scanners do now. Some of the older ones or the cheaper ones might not include color. So it's essentially a dot with four properties. An X coordinate, a Y coordinate, a Z coordinate, and probably color. Uh, and there might be a, some more with it, but that's the basics of it. And then there's millions of those points. But each one of those points you can then attach um, you, you can put those into, say, an Excel sheet or something like that, and you can attach data to those points as well if you yeah. want to. Yeah. And being that they are a laser scan, X, Y, and Z, you can do, um, you can take dimensions off of them. You can take angles. You can show things. You can hide things. You can crop it. And prepare it. You see this is actually in Revit, um, this, this image on the screen. This is another point cloud, a scan with color. Uh, that has been placed into Revit. So existing conditions are dropped in there just as very, very quickly. In fact, I will do that in, uh, in a few minutes. Uh, so when, why would you use Recap, Recap Pro? Like Stan was talking about, you can survey existing conditions. Uh, you can do large areas. You can do complex areas very efficiently or things with oh, high ceilings. And maybe you're, work, maybe you're looking at the structural aspect of the ceiling that you cannot reach without scaffolding. That suddenly got really expensive to survey it by hand. Or there's uh, utilities up in the ceiling, mechanical plumbing, it's an existing facility. I need to, to, to replicate this so I can design it, change the design, uh, work with the remodeling an existing facility. But the ceiling's too high for me to survey it. Not a problem with the laser. I have a, a scan of a very large uh, room. If you were at a customer appreciation event, two years ago? Is that the one just up the street? Uh, the, the castle looking uh, facility. We did a laser scan in there. Um, I don't have that, that one open. But it's a really high ceiling. There's open, uh, open utilities, mechanical, plumbing uh, up in the ceiling. There's structural in the ceiling. Didn't matter. Uh, the laser got everything. So it can be, there's definitely times when, uh, when it can be handy. Uh, there is a cost to it. Um, and you could purchase a scanner yourself. I'm going to throw out the figure $40,000 $40, is what I've heard thrown around. Some are more, some scanners are more. Uh, there are some scanners that are less now. Uh, the ones that, um, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a company called Dot Technologies. I believe they're out of Texas. They have a great handheld tool that's about $5,000. <clears throat> um, and it, as far as I was concerned, what I could see 
it did as good a job as any of the, mm. you know, the, the expensive tripod based units. Was it? Did you see a demo where they uh, did they have, hold it on a backpack or carry it in a backpack strapped to there? It's it's attached to a iPad. Ah, oh, okay. So it's it's very okay. You know, it's it's not big at all either. Now you know, admittedly, it's used in a a, a room sized environment rather than a say anything outdoors or something like that where you're doing say a civil project. But you know, I, I suppose if you were doing a uh, diversion box or, or something in a civil thing where it was kind of a limited area, you could do it just fine. But uh, still, that shows how the technology is oh, yeah. coming down and coming in line. Was that a laser scanner or yeah. a photo? No, nope, it's, a, okay. it's a, a laser. Okay, because I've seen uh, a short demonstration at Revit Technology, RTC, uh, of a photogrammetry, which I'll get into very, very shortly. Um, Attached to an iPad, right? And that was. And there, there are those as well. That was really good for inside of buildings. Mm -hmm. If you had, a, especially small complex complex areas, you could walk through holding this, just taking a kind of like taking a video. Um, and the demonstration I saw was like a steam plant or a, a utility room, uh, where there's a lot of pipes. Uh, the software I'm going to show you next works really good uh, outside, but it's the algorithms are not optimized for indoor use, whereas this one was. Um, but I, I, I don't have that up. Um, it's not something that's included with the suite, but it's something that's available, something that's out there. And the technology is really, is really uh, improving quickly. And the price is coming down, and the technology is going up. So the cost of scan area depends on the room. You can buy the scanner yourself, or there's companies that have already bought the scanner and will come out and survey it for you. Uh, so I'm not going to throw a number out for that one because it varies a lot, depending on who and where and how big and how accurate and how much you want to see and how many times do they need to place a tripod, how complex is the building. Um, so where would you use it? Any place there's conditions that need to be surveyed. Um, they do need to be visible. Uh, if you have a drop ceiling, false ceiling, it can't see through that. It's, it's light. It's light-based. Uh, and you can't see through the floor, can't see through the, through the ground. So anything behind a wall, behind a floor, behind a ceiling, you know, just know that it's, you have to be able to see it. Um, so who would, you know, who would use this? Architeer, actually architeers. <laughs> I'm glad it's almost the end of the year. Uh, architects, engineers, structural, MEP, civil, um, accident reconstruction, um, uh, historical preservation, you know, scan, get a very accurate scan of a historical building or or whatever. Uh, I'm sure like Mount Rushmore has been scanned. I don't, have, I don't have that one, but I'm sure it's been done. Oh, the, actually the first laser scan that I saw uh, was uh, the World Trade Center. The, uh, there was a concrete stairs, uh, stairwell, st or not a stairwell, but stairs that were left remaining at the bottom. And I was working supporting, doing AutoCAD Revit support at the, the um, Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Being a government agency, they already had their own laser scanner, and that was one thing that they scanned. This was 2008. Um, so they had that, and they brought it into, I think, Navisworks at the time. We just took a look at it, and that was my the extent of my involvement with it, was just uh, seeing it. Um, they also used a laser scanner later. They were um, look, they were going to replace a um, light rail, it was a bridge going over a road, and a light rail station. But they couldn't shut it down because, you know, it's a commuter station used in New York City every day. Um, so they scanned it with a laser. Okay, here's the existing condition. So just in a short amount of time, um, they got exact existing conditions right down, you know, the beams, the structure, you know, cracks in the concrete, down to the pigeons that were sitting on the pipes. Um, you could see the pigeons in there. Um, so it was an exact scan. It was very quick. It was very accurate. Um, pretty simple to set up. So you know, it's not just uh, for buildings, uh, manufacturing facilities, urban planning, other disciplines. Uh, let's see. Uh, anything else you want to add in there, Stan? No, I, you, you, you've got a, <laughs> you've got the more interesting stuff. Okay. I just think this is a very interesting technology that's uh, just in its infancy for, for what we all do. Yeah, yeah. This, it's, I see more and more people using it. It's not not on every project by any means. Uh, I'm going to skip the demonstration for right now. We were just in the desktop, the Recap, Recap Pro. You just saw that. Um, next, I'm going to take a look at the other flavor of Recap. Completely different. There's no installation. This one's 100% on the cloud. Uh, so switching gears and looking at the cloud tool, looking at 
Recap 360. And even this has two parts of it. Uh, there is what they call real view. You can view laser scans on this, view them on the cloud if they are upload them to your A360 account. But really uh, what we're going to take a look at is the photogrammetry tools. <clears throat> now, what is photogrammetry? Well, when in doubt, go to the Google it and copy and paste. <laughs> photogrammetry is the use of photo photography in surveying and mapping to measure distances between objects. That's what the internet said. Uh, what I would describe it is very briefly, it takes a collection of 2D photographs, just pictures, uh, and converts them into a three-dimensional mesh, which is, that's just dang cool. <laughs> I try, you know, I imagine every once in a while, if I had taken this back and showed it to a 10-year younger version of myself, just back five, ten years even, it would have been like black magic, or take it back, you know, when you were a kid and showed somebody, you know, I can... Hey, no. <laughs> sure. Yeah, anyway, before I, before I get all Andy Rooney on y'all. Um, so it takes a collection of, of 2D uh, images and makes a 3D mesh out of it. You can use almost any digital camera. Uh, we did find one digital, digital camera. The resolution was just too low. It was a pretty, uh, pretty low resolution, a pretty cheap camera. Uh, that did not work. Everything else we tried, uh, I had a 35 mil or not a call it a 35 millimeter, a DSLR. That worked great. Uh, I'll probably show you some of those in just a minute. A uh, GoPro camera works. It does have a bit of a fisheye lens. Uh, there are some of the GoPros that don't work. If you really are serious about purchasing one, I can I can get to the list. Well, and I, you know, one of the things that we'll tell you is that, you know, just anecdotally, last year at our Customer Appreciation Day, uh, our, our big door prize was a uh, drone. It's on the screen right now, or a little little quadcopter, and it came with a camera attached yeah. to it. And it was uh, for doing point cloud stuff. It you know it didn't it did nice little movies and things like that. Yeah. For fun stuff, but for any sort of point cloud stuff, it was just unacceptable. So <laughs> we ended up attaching a GoPro to it to do some of the point cloud things we were wanting to demonstrate. Yeah, um, so the GoPro worked. There was a couple different GoPros. Uh, I used, I've got like a five-year-old, just a pocket point-and-shoot uh, digital camera. I've used that for, for uh, pictures and uploading them and it puts the mesh together. Uh, you could, we've used iPhones, so just about any camera, as long as it has half, halfway decent resolution. Um, so, like Stan was just saying, uh, for small investments, uh, what we did was we took the quadcopter, attached a GoPro to it, so the GoPro was an investment, the quadcopter was an investment, but once you've got those, that's pretty much yeah, it. That was, the whole investment there was, I mean, we, did, we got the stuff right off of Amazon and the whole investment was uh, about $800 and then about 16 cents of blades as everybody was learning to fly it. <laughs> well, you were supposed to tell them that. At 12 bucks a set. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No. I, yeah. Um, so we flew this around the building, took two dimensional pictures. There's one. There's one shot that was used. There's one picture of the building. We uploaded. It'll take up to 250 photographs per upload. Now, if you need more than that, you can do two different meshes. You know, maybe if you segregate them into the east half of the building and the west half, with some overlap. You do need some overlap. Uh, in fact, you need well. Picture to picture, you need a lot of overlap so that the computer can recognize, oh, here's the door in this picture, matches up with the door in that picture, and here's the window, and here's the tree and the park bench. Um, you do want a, a lot of overlap between from one picture to the next. So we uploaded, we, <laughs> we took a lot of pictures, uh, uploaded them up to the cloud, um, and then, well, let me go ahead and demonstrate that. Uh, so we'll kind of take it from here, from the two-dimensional pictures, taken with the quadcopter. I'm going to back up for just a second and make sure I finish this slide. Uh, so it takes 2D pictures from any, just about any camera. Um, you upload it, you can, well, the computer, the cloud, the uh, Autodesk software will convert your picture, your 2D pictures into a 3D mesh and give you the 3D mesh. With that, uh, you can clean it up, you can crop it, uh, you can add a scale to it uh, to make sure it's getting a little more accurate. You can align them. Uh, and you have a 3D model for use. You can view it on the screen, you can view it on the cloud, you can export it to OBJ format, to FBX format, to RCM, uh, IPM, RCS, to F, oh, is that five different formats? And so let's take a look at that. Let's see. You know, what you're going to see here, honestly, 
we didn't see any particular degradation of accuracy over a, a similar laser scan, uh, you know, of, of different points. I mean, they're, you know, got to be careful with that because a laser scan, you can set the accuracy, uh, whereas the, the photogrammetry, and not quite as much. At times you can, but not quite as much. But, you know, one-to-one -one for accuracy settings, eh, pretty darn good. Yeah, it is. It's pretty, whoops, <laughs> it's a little sensitive. Tony's still learning to fly. What? <laughs> yeah. But, the, 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 yeah, this, this was a scan we did flying the, the quadcopter around the, the building here. Get some pretty surreal effects in the in the background there. Which oh yeah, there fun. you can see the uh, the is it farther away? So I kind of need to crop this. It's too big for me to to pan and zoom so very well. A little uncontrollable, isn't it? Yeah. So, so can, Justin, kind of going back to your question. I mean, you're seeing Tony. What's your computer have on it? My is it? And now I've broken it. Uh, Twelve gig. I think I have 16 gig, but it's like it's three years old now, and I've got a lot of uh, stuff on it. But you can see some of the some of the issues really are are not so much the recap as just you know uh, there we go. computer management. And there, there's a lot of data in here. What I should do, I can use this. Bound, all right. Never mind. <laughs> oh, there it is. I've got the bounding box that I need to make this smaller so that, and it doesn't help that the navigation and, and the scroll wheel in AutoCAD and Revit, this works the opposite, <laughs> so having issues with that, I keep scrolling the wrong direction. Uh, I'm cropping it down, let's see, let's move this in a little bit, it's not going to lie, it's a little unwieldy. Um, so anyway, I would crop it down. Let me finish that. Oh, I still need to get rid of this side. Most of, most of between here and Wyoming, I've got to get rid of. Yeah. So I'll make that a little smaller. So I rotate around. Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's a little better if I can remember to scroll the wrong direction. So anyway, it gives you a three... <laughs> It gives you a 3D um, mesh from 2D pictures. Uh, in fact, there's a list of the pictures uh, on the left. Let's see if I can find there. There, uh, the picture on the left. I just clicked at it. That's the view from that picture. Uh, let me see. There's some other. There's one. There's a the view from this picture. You can see the red lines in there. That's the view from this other camera. If I spin it around. There we go. That's what that camera saw. Uh, we did. That's what you you don't need the quadcopter uh, except to see under the roof. So if you have another way to get pictures of the roof, of the whole roof, some close, some far, get different angles. Uh, so if it's a smaller object, or if you're able to get pictures from the, you know, around, if you've got just a really long pole, you could do the same thing. You wouldn't need to invest in the quadcopter. But it's just you know fun and cool. So we had pictures from all around the building. Let's see what else do I have. There's some pictures. Anyway, um, you can take this mesh, export it to a number of different formats. Let me go back. Uh, so this is this is a web browser. This is 100% on the cloud. If I go to, let's see, download the project. Uh, it's one of the options back on the home screen. I can download it to FBX, OBJ, RCM, and RCS formats. Um, this, depending on the format and depending on the resolution, can be free or it might cost you, I think it was five cloud credits for me, which is, uh, if you have to buy them, they're like a dollar each, so it's like five dollars for the free, for the high resolution. For the lower resolution, that for, if I remember, it was free. And Stan, you want to elaborate on cloud credits? Well, I can't. I don't know that any of us can <laughs> The Autodesk keeps changing the program, so it's it's kind of hard to keep up with. But yes, a, a cloud credit essentially equals a dollar. So if you if you go out and buy, you know, a block of cloud credits, you buy them in blocks of 100 cloud points. Okay. So it's a hundred dollars, and then 
when you go to do a rendering or use uh, the Recap 360 or structure some of the structural analysis tools, and more and more things will become this way with the Autodesk world. You'll basically it, it'll charge your uh, CloudPoint account, you know, five credits or ten credits or two credits or whatever they decide to charge for various services, and so that that's essentially how it works. Now, at one point with every subscription renewal, you got you received a uh, hundred cloud points, and I believe that's still the case. They used to be transferable, so if you had a company. Uh, similar to uh, bills out there where you have many, many, many seats, you could kind of move those cloud points around and uh, now they reside with the particular seat. So you've got uh, 100 cloud credits per seat and you can't move them around the, the company like you used to be able to, which is kind of a bummer really, I think anyway. Yeah. And uh, sorry, did you say how many cloud credits do you get per seat? Steve? Well, you get uh, it's unless it's, things have changed. It's it's still a hundred, I believe. Okay. Uh, per, okay. Per renewal. Okay. Because last time I looked at, it, I thought it was twenty-five. So hundred's good. It's it's twenty-five. I think it's twenty-five gig on the on the cloud storage. It's 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 getting a little hard to keep up with all this stuff. <laughs> And it's it's uh, it's something that can be used for more than just this. Um, yeah. You can use it for online rendering, cloud rendering with Revit. You can use it for um, structural analysis, uh, energy analysis. If you're using InfraWorks, it uh, uh, will soon drive the uh, model builder tools. Um, What's the optimization in Civil 3D? Road optimization yeah, or something? The, <laughs> I just forgot. The road optimization, the bridge optimization, the bridge builder and things like that, yeah. So more and more things will go that way. It's, you know, it's basically giving you access to the Amazon cloud that Autodesk subscribes to and allowing you to use that um, uh, mass computing capability to solve more complex problems like why there's a hole in the fairing on your motorcycle. Yes, I, and I actually zoomed in on that uh, to point out it does not do good with objects that are clear or shiny. And mm -hmm. uh, it's technically a silver paint, but it's 15-year-old silver paint. So I was, was kind of impressed how well it did, uh, but the windshield is clear, so it had trouble with the windshield. Uh, if you have windows on a building, glass windows, you, the camera is actually going to show you the reflection of the trees and yourself and other things around it. So if you do need to, this is just kind of an extra tip, if you're really going to use this photogrammetry, uh, one tip was to throw a bunch of baby powder, talcum powder, on the windows of the building before you take the pictures. Um, and that way it's a dull surface, the matte surface, instead of a reflective surface. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to close out of this and go back home. So, uh, Mike, I see you have your hand raised. Do you have a, have a question you could type into the question box, or maybe you just hit the raised hand button just to say hello? Oh, and I have Robert Robin. There we go. Um, how many pictures minimum would you have to take in a small room? So basically, you know, given a, a particular area to get a good resolution to get a point Good point, Cloud Tony. What would you be looking at as far as number of pictures? Uh, I don't know that there's a hard number, but a lot. Depends on the size of the room. You want to overlap. I forget if it's 50% or 25% or... I think it's about 50% that you want to overlap. Um, so, yeah. You know, basically what you're trying to do is triangulate points so that you can... Um, so that the system can line them up. So that's why you want a high degree of overlap. So uh, to say what number that would be, but... Uh, Dozens, if it's a big room, you might have a hundred. He says degrees. it's a small room, so... Uh, and indoors, it had, the algorithms have a little more trouble, just FYI, they have a little more trouble uh, with indoor seats. Outdoor, actually, I have, uh, I'm not going to run out of time to pull it up. Uh, we took pictures of a dumpster. Uh, I walked around it probably two or three times, once with the camera low, you know, two or three, pic three or four pictures of the front, three or four or five, pic three, four pictures of the side, three or four pictures of the back, and then walked around at like eye level, three or four pictures of each side, and I walked around again with a couple, some pictures of the top of it. So that's, 
uh, what, you know, less than 100, maybe 30 or 40 pictures. But that was a dumpster, just because I just wanted to test the camera and the software. And before taking, you know, spending an hour on it, let's make sure everything works. And that turned out quite well with less than 50 pictures. But it was outside, it was an object, um, and it was a small object. Uh, so a room between 50 and 100, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I do have one I took, uh, but I just don't have time to see it. Uh, my parents bought a house, so before they moved in, I ran around and took a whole bunch of pictures of it. Uh, but, yeah, we're kind of short on time, so. Uh, let's see. Where is that one? Okay. So, uh, I opened up Revit. I'm in Revit. I uh, went to the Insert tab. There's a tool to insert link in point clouds. This is the, whoops, if I can know the right buttons, is the point cloud, the RCP that I downloaded, that building we were just looking at, the CAD1 building, the mesh that the software created on the cloud from all our photographs. This is the RCP file. Make sure I import the wrong right one. I'll bring that into Revit. I uh, did an import. And there's, sorry, it's a little big. It's still importing. Um, there we go. There's the building. All right, kind of getting back to your question. I mean, let's say a wall was, um, you know, rather than the whole room, let's just use one wall right at the moment. So let's say a wall's about 12 feet wide and about 8 feet high. The the idea you kind of want to do is you kind of want to make sure that you have, I mean, you can take a straight on picture of that wall and if, you're, if you can stand back far enough from it, you can get the whole wall in. Well, what you really want to do is then have enough overlap so that you have at least three points that can be stitched together of any given point on that wall. So if you've got if you've got down in the lower corner of the wall, you want to have one picture in, you know, maybe straight on, and then pan over and take another picture, you know, kind of skewed around the corner a little bit, but still capturing that one corner. Um, maybe one kind of down in the floor and picking up the corner so that uh, essentially you've got something to triangulate on. And basically you want to have that for every um, potential point. Yeah. So basically you're going to have to do maybe on a, on a, 10, a 12 by 8 wall, you're going to have to maybe do, you know, 10, 12, 15 pictures to get that kind of tri triangulation and resolution. So, you know, quite a few. Yeah, you want to make sure you get every single point, every corner, every edge, every spot on the wall in three different pictures or more. Yeah. Um, so this is, I'm in Revit, I'm in a floor plan view, I'm looking down, I set my view range to cut out the roof so I can see the outline of this building, I can see the parking lot. I'm going to create a wall. Uh, let's do, 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 do whatever, exterior, just grab some random one. Uh, I can start lining up and tracing where these uh, matching my wall to this point cloud. And I didn't even, I'm not an architect by the way, <laughs> I didn't pay attention. The walls are going to be too high. Uh, I just went with the default, so they're going up like 20 feet high. But if you use Revit for more than an hour, you know that's, really pretty easy to, to fix. So I put in, I just traced over while I was talking, put in, I don't know, a handful of walls. Let me look back to that uh, 3D view. And if I go to video, you can kind of see my walls intermixing with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the scan, with the point cloud. If I go into visibility graphics, now there's an extra tab in here for point clouds. If I turn this off, just turn off the visibility, bam. There's the walls that I just created. And they're pretty accurate. Now, I'll give or take a few inches, because I was sloppy and talking, and you know, maybe even six inches at some point, because I was talking and just clicking and not really being, paying uh, too much attention. But very quickly, I could recreate this building. You know, maybe the walls are too high or whatever. I can lower these down. Uh, and and, and, and I will say that, you know, for those of you who are on here who are maybe using Civil 3D or Oh, yeah. uh, InfoWorks or whatever. There's very similar tools in those programs for uh, managing and starting to draw. Basically, they're AutoCAD-based 
uh, programmed well InfoWorks isn't, but it's it's got its own engine. But uh, Civil 3D or Map 3D or something like that are all AutoCAD based, and AutoCAD handles uh, uh, the point clouds in a very similar fashion. So you can start picking up points and drawing lines in a very similar fashion to what Tony did here with uh, Revit. Yeah, so this, this is where it starts to become useful, where it starts to feed your design. So without a whole lot of investment, without a whole lot of time, I mean, we, uh, with a little practice, you could probably get this building in an hour, I'll say two hours. Um, well, it, <laughs> a lot of that depends on the battery life of your, of your quadcopter. You know, can you fly for 10 minutes or 30 minutes? Uh, and how you know, and how fast you fly, and wind conditions. Um, but not a lot of labor. You don't need to send the interns out to people for a week to measure all this, or even a day. Um, it does take a little time up uh, crunching on the cloud, but that's not your time. You know, upload at 10 a.m. It should be done by noon or sometime in the afternoon. Uh, you can download that mesh file. You know, spend 20 minutes cleaning it up, and drop it into Revit, and Start tracing over it. You've got your measurements. You've got your conditions. I have you know, things that maybe I wouldn't have thought about uh, if I was out there with a tape measure, even with a, you know, a handheld uh, measuring device. You know, where's, uh, let me. And Tony, again at AU, we saw some great uh, near future tools. I, I think you're going to really, some of you really enjoy these that will uh, start to do object recognition and existing object, uh, you know, like. Recognition, recognizing uh, piping and water lines, and, ah. and kind of automatically converting that so that you can you can start picking up and drawing on those things. Yeah, because it's not quite there yet as far as recognizing a pipe from a duct uh, from a wall, but like Stan said, it's it's getting there, and yeah. it should be there. It sounds like it'll be there pretty soon. Uh, okay, Don, we we gave the quadcopter away as the door <laughs> prize and. Uh, didn't didn't buy another one, but I do have. We do have some resources if you're if you're seriously looking for someone with a quad quadcopter oh, yes. who can do a great job. We have um, some resources that I can put you in touch with there. Yeah, that's true. Um, Walter has a question. Um, it says now this photo merging program is available only in Pro. So basically, that's it's. Uh, uh, 360, where the, the photo tool yeah. is. Uh, there's two different things. Um, see, all these all these things get a little confusing. There's the Revit in the box, and then there's or the Recap in the box, and then there's the Recap Pro, which you pay just a little bit of extra to turn on the Pro tools, uh, and then there's the 360, which is another little feature which you pay some money to get access to when you need it. It's kind of an accessed available tool yeah. and that's per, the one that has the, per the project. most of the photo stuff. Yeah, the photo stuff. They're both called Recap, but they're very different tools. Um, the one on the desktop is just called Recap or Recap Pro. Uh, that one's installed on your desktop that's very powerful and strong can handle millions of points of laser points. That one is, I think that one's really good. It's very robust. Uh, I will that's one where we were looking at the classroom. We were inside of a room, inside of a classroom. You can crop your building, you can crop out extra stuff, you can find planes, recognize planes, walls, floors, uh, processes, um, processes the laser scans. That's, and it'll do, you know, I was working with the file of a uh, warehouse where they moved the laser scanner, because it was a full and use warehouse, around to at least half a dozen different places in the building and made another scan of existing conditions, the the top one, the recap, the desktop, will register those scans. It will align them so that it can make one complete 3D building. Because uh, the first scan, that was blocked by columns and walls and forklifts and pallets. So there's another scan on the other side of that, got other stuff, but it couldn't get the back wall. So we combined all of these scans. That was when the, the top one, the desktop, the recap that comes with your suite. The photos, the photogrammetry service, converting 2D to 3D from pictures, that's a, a different, completely different version of Recap. That is the, on the cloud, that's Recap 360. Um, so they're, they're, they're both called Recap, but they're two different things. Our Recap 360 is a cloud-based, 
like I said, I'm glad at the end of the year I can't hardly talk. Cloud-based photogrammetry service that can create 3D textured mesh and point clouds from photographs. Uh, so that can be really cool. It's, it's, it's not quite as accurate as the laser scans. It can be really accurate, uh, but it has its own quirks too. Um, if you're going to use it, uh, I would play around with it first, uh, practice. If you actually want to use it on a job, I would practice a little bit first. That one can be, it can have some, uh, some quirks. Like the first camera we did just didn't have enough resolution. Yep. Um, and I've done some stuff where I didn't have enough overlap between pictures. I didn't take enough pictures. Uh, there's information online. There's information on the web. Autodesk blogs have some. Uh, I have some information. There's like one GoPro camera that at least six months ago was not, not fully compatible. Um, I forget which she was like the Hero 3 Black, or I forget if that was the good one or the one that was not as good. But anyway, um, there's information on that, and it's really kind of impressive technology. Uh, so let's see, any, uh, any questions? Uh, kind of winding down. Uh, so I think, that, I think one of the things that I would say is, you know, don't, as exciting as point cloud technology is, and as far as it's come in just a couple years even, it'll, it's only going to get better and it's only going yeah. to get more useful. But at this point, anyway, I wouldn't use it for a, a substitute for, you know, if you need accuracy on a land job or a water improvement job or something like that, still, get it surveyed for the, the final information. If you're trying to, you know, really do a hard, fast uh, renovation job on a building or something like that, make sure you measure it. Don't, yeah. don't use don't. point clouds for the definitive measurements at this point. Well, the uh, laser ones are pretty good. But they are, but it's still... You want to just do a sanity check, a reality yep. check. Um, you know, just go out yep. there yourself, just make sure. Uh, but the laser is great for things that you can't reach. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and the point clouds... Or sorry, the photogrammetry is really improving, um, and that's really good for for conceptual. Maybe you're bidding on a job, and there's no as built, uh, and it's a big job. Like, yeah, I don't want to measure this whole thing because I might not even get the job. I don't want to put a big investment in there, but with the photos, I can put in a small investment and get reasonably accurate. You know, get get 3D information that I can then use to do my mock-ups to do the bidding, and then. You know, maybe you'll be the one that would win the job because of the of what you're able to do. Juan, so. um, your your question or your your comment and question are very good. Uh, the clouds themselves are impressive, but is there a method to derive solid geometry from them without having to trace over clouds and hope that you have the correct point? Um, that's what I was talking about a minute ago. Right now, at least in the Autodesk world, uh, that's that's pretty limited. Um, yeah. So the short answer is not yet. Not yet, but I I will tell you that Autodesk uh, Tremble has some very promising technology. Oh, yeah. uh, Leica has some very promising technology. Topcon has some cool stuff coming out. I think I use the Ferro software. Yeah. You you give it a year, yeah. you're going to see some cool stuff. Um, can you take the photogrammetry model and import it to, into a 3D printer? Don asks. Well, I don't know, Don, for sure. I mean, theoretically, you could import it to a 3D printer or, say, an NC, CNC mill or something like that, because basically you're just moving from point to point, right? Yeah. But yeah. I don't know how those convert data well enough to say, yes or no, or if you would need to run them through some sort of post-processor beforehand. Yeah, I think both answers are right. You can, if you have the, you know, did you, is it FBX format or OBJ, and the, and the, you know, the MakerBot might take one format, and another printer might take another uh, format, file format. Um, and like Stan just said, you might want to clean it up uh, before doing that, because you can get, it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it has, uh, if I zoom in without, we're running low on time, so I'm not going to change my point resolution. Uh, it has a little trouble with trees sometimes, uh, and other like soft surfaces. Like if you did a person that might have trouble with their hair, because it's not like one solid; it's a lot of uh, you know, fluffy things, or a pet, uh, or trees. It might have a little trouble with it. So if you're going to do a 3D print, you'll probably need to clean it up a little bit in some different software. There's 
Uh, mess mixer, there's. I'm just basically. There's a lot of tools yeah. out there. I would say that this was probably one of the hottest topics at AU. And you know, back to your question, Juan, uh, object recognition and uh, definition was probably the top thing that I kept seeing out there. That the promise of that technology. So I would say in the next, easily in the next year, certainly two years, you're going to see. Uh, very capable systems for for doing that kind of thing. I think that I think one of the biggest challenges with object recognition that I've seen is just that. You know, if for example you scan a, a mechanical room and you you get the pipes, well, you're going to pick up the front surface of the pipe or the the surface that the scan or the photograph picks up. But if you don't get behind the pipe, you're going to have kind of a hollow uh, type of thing. So part of the challenge is, you know, the the object recognition stuff. They were doing some things with pipe, and the object recognition stuff would say, okay, there seems to be a curve here. So the logical way for this to go would be to follow that curve on on around to its natural co conclusion, therefore creating a pipe. But if the pipe did something different, or the object did something different on the backside, well you know, that's where the challenge comes in. It's it's real interesting. So 33 pictures uh, for this dumpster <laughs> is what I just looked at. Um, there we go. One, again, one has another good. Um, can you use video to create a 3D file? Not really. You yeah, <laughs> you would think so. Uh, I think the short version of that is just the resolution. You don't have crisp images. You actually That's have Calvin's question, by the way. Because I've heard that asked a couple times, and they've kind of frowned and said, no, not really, not yet, maybe in the future. But right now, it's really the algorithms, the software is really made for photographs. Yeah, theoretically, maybe you could stop the video and take individual frames, but there's problems with that, too, I suppose. Uh, Juan asks, Crate and Barrel uses laser scanning to survey their prospective sites. How wow. does that differ from point clouds, and how accurate are the two methods uh, for building off? Now, you know, Crate and Barrel, um, some of the other places are doing this. And basically, so laser scanning is the, is the technology that creates the point cloud. It's a method for creating the point cloud. So the end product of a laser scan is the point cloud that can then be used for uh, doing whatever you want to do. You know, um, surveying, be a little careful with that word, but uh, creating an image of the environment, the interior environment or whatever, that's what you do that with. From there, so you, you, you go in with a laser scanner, you scan the environment, you get a point cloud, you stitch the point clouds together to create uh, a total picture of the environment, and then from there you can take that into Revit or Civil 3D and start flushing things out and so forth and so on. Now, you know, what Crate and Barrel does, um, by using the, the laser scanner, they're going to get a, a, a very high... Uh, accuracy. I, as I said earlier, I think it's important to still take some base measurements um, that give you a, a a defining sense of scale and yeah. and so forth and so on. But the accuracy of laser scans is much higher, all things considered, than than photogrammetry unless the photogrammetry and the laser are set to the same accuracy, if that makes yeah. any sense. You can scale the photos, but uh, anyway, is there another question? We should wind no, up. Folks, okay. we gotta, we got to get on to another meeting. We appreciate your time today. Hope this was helpful. It was pretty high-level overview, no, no pun intended, with the quadcopter. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon. If you have more questions for us about this, we'll be glad to talk to you individually. And I just want to add Merry Christmas, Stan. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Uh, Mike, I wouldn't use a smartphone at this point, particularly. It just we we haven't had particularly good good results with that. Take a look at with the phone, like an iPhone. Look at um, 
Uh, 123D Catch. 123D Catch is a good free product from Autodesk for iPhone stuff. Much, much less accurate, though. All right, folks. Thanks very much. Thanks. Have a good one.